Okay, so in this video for linear programming, the worksheet says lesson 3-4, we're in section 3-5. Um, once again, hopefully you're printing this out to follow along. If you're doing this in your notes, it's fine. Um, but what we're going to do is go through just some of the basic skills with our linear programming problems. We've seen a complete problem um, where you're going through and, and setting everything up. This is just some of those uh, other skills involved in that. A lot of these uh, the third one, we got to set up equations. Uh, the first one, the equations are already set for you. So let's maximize. So to maximize, we're going to find the largest value. Okay? So here's our objective function, and the constraints are x is greater than 0, so I'm going to graph a line for that. y is greater than or equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and graph a line for that. And then I'm going to graph a line, x plus y is less than or equal to 6. We talked about how the easiest way to do this is to find intercepts. So I know that 0 is going to be plugged in for y. So I kind of imagine that y is gone. Well, what would x equal? x is equal to 6. We do the same thing. If x is 0, what's y going to equal? 6. So I plot those two points. Those are my intercepts. And I graph my line. The y is not negative, so the inequality is going to stay the same. So we're going to shade the region that in this little triangle right here. What are the vertices? 0, 0, right? We got this guy right here, and we have our two intercepts. Um, the reason that we're using this intercept method is because it's easier to spot our vertices. So we've got 0, 6, and 6, 0. So we're going to use the table um, to evaluate the profit, or it's not profit because there's no application behind it, but when we have 0 and 0 for x and y, we get 0 for p. When we have 0 and 6, p is going to equal 2 times 0 plus 6, so we're going to equal 6. When we have 6 and 0, we're going to equal 2 times 6 plus 0, which is 12. So we have 0, 6, and 12. Uh, the pair that gives the maximum value is 6, 0. Okay? So now for this next problem, we're going to go ahead and minimize. So this is vocab, minimize, maximize. In order to do that, we need to find the corner points. So I'm going to graph these three lines. We have x is less than 4. So I'm going to graph the line x is less than 4. And then we have a line y is less than or equal to 6. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that line. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph the intercepts, so I cover up x, the y-intercept is 7, I cover up y, solve for x, that's also 7, connect the dots, I am less than 4, so I'm in here, less than 6, so this little rectangle, and then positive y value, the equation doesn't flip, so greater than the line, I'm in this little triangle right here. So this point I know definitely because the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines. So this point is 4, 7. Okay? So I know some of my corner points. 1. I'm going to say that this one is 1, 6. The reason is if I plug in 1 and 6 here, it's going to equal 7. So I kind of, this is an easy enough equation where I can use my graph and confirm that I'm, I'm plotted at the right point. So if I have 4 for x and 3 for y, uh, that is also going to equal 7 for this equation. And so I know that those two are the appropriate coordinates for my corner points. So which one is going to give me the minimum value? Well, I need to plug each one in. So if I take out my calculator real quick, I'm going to go ahead and plug in all these points. So I do 4 times 4 plus 3 times 7, so I'm using that point. That gives me a 37. So I'm going to write a 37 next to this guy. If I plug a 1 and a 6, we can use mental math here. 1 times 4 is 4, 6 times 3 is 18, so that's going to be 22. Hopefully my mental math is uh, working well this morning. Uh, so I'm just going to double check it, and we are good. Now, 4 and 3, so if I plug in 4 and 3, so 4 times 4 is 16, 3 times 3 is 9, add those together, I get 25. So 22 is the minimum, okay? So I'm just plugging these values in. 
Now this very last one, we're dealing with a situation where we need to write a system of inequalities. So Jasmine is planning a maximum of 40 bulbs of lilies and tulips. So I'm going to call lilies x and then, oh, scratch that. The problem is saying lilies is y and tulips is x. So we got to read the whole problem. So this is going to be y and this is going to be x. She's planting a maximum of 40 bulbs of lilies and tulips. So I know x plus y is going to be less than or equal to 40. Okay? And I know she wants more tulips than lilies. So I know x is greater than y. And if I read this, to graph the line, I'm going to actually rewrite it as y is less than x. And notice how the symbol is still pointing towards y. So this is just an easier format for me to graph. And I know we can't have negative lilies and tulips. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these lines. I know that the y-intercept is 40, and I know the x-intercept is 40. So I'm going to graph that line. That's a solid line. Now, y and x, the y-intercept is 1, and I know that the slope is 1, so if I go up 5, right, I can kind of just go up in increments um, because we're an increasing graph, so I, I can't use the um, x and y-intercept like I did the first problem because they're both at 0, 0. And so what's going to happen here is it's going to cross at 20, 20, so I identify that. But this guy is a dashed line. I need to be greater than x is 0, and I need to be greater than y. Um, y needs to be greater than 0. Um, I look back at my functions. I know y is less than x, so I'm going to be shading below. So I'm going to be shading in this area, and I know I'm going to be shading below the solid line. So this guy right here is my shaded region. The maximum number of lilies is 19. Now, you may say it's 20 because this 20, this point is 20, 20, but it says in the statement she wants more tulips than lilies. And because this line is a dash, I cannot have a point on this mark right here. Okay? Uh, what is the minimum number of tulip bulbs? Well, she wants more tulips than lilies, so technically we would say it's got to be 1. We can't have 0 because then she would have the same amount of lilies as tulips. There we go.